Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me today is LFC prospect, bodybuilder, sessions wrestler, content creator. The list, the resume is just getting longer and longer. Miss Susan K, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege. I got to say, first and foremost, congratulations to you. We're going to get a lot into this in this conversation in this forum. IFBB Pro Card, congratulations on getting that. I saw the pics. I saw the footage. I'm very happy for you, Susan. Thank you. I'm. I can't even words can express how I feel in regards to that. That's that was just a a big, big hurdle, and now it's uh, restarting with new goals. So I'm I'm really excited about this upcoming year. I look at it from a stance too as well. First and foremost, you've been killing it not just in bodybuilding, but for those who have not seen Susan on social media, constantly in the gym, constantly working hard, the right dieting, the right acumen. I got to say, it really paid off to having you get to that IFBB Pro card, and the footage was amazing. The event was immaculate. Really showcased you all in all. You, you know what? It, it, it's uh, it it definitely came together, and um, there was a couple of things that had happened that I wasn't quite sure that I was going to even be able to um, to uh, uh, go to the show and participate. But in the end, things worked out the way they should have, and I couldn't be happier. From a stance too, as well, like this is what any bodybuilder, just in general, that want to really progress in the fitness world, getting to that spot. And I got to say, I got to give up to your girl Sandra Hewins, man. I saw you guys doing your thing in the gym. I believe she was the one screaming for you as you were going up there getting your pro card. That's a great support system, and she's a beauty in her own right doing her thing. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's, it's you know what? Um, she is just amazing, Sandra. If if she wasn't there with me. Um, then I don't know what I would have done. She she definitely has to get, I have to give her a shout out. Um, unfortunately, my coach could not make it to the Arizona um, show with me. Um, and Sandra just stepped in and, and she knew how to take over. There was some situations that arose that she knew how to handle. And in the end, again, everything followed out as, and I couldn't be happier. And first and foremost, it is around the holiday season when this all occurred. So how was it? Because you did post a great post, the travel, the money, the miles that you put into this as well. And it's your birthday weekend, Susan. What a great way to spend a birthday, right? It was the best present I have received. The best. <laughs> now, I got to look at it from a stance, too, as well. 2021 is over. We are in the new year, and it is 2022. Back to some sense of normalcy, a new normal, if you will, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, the quarantining, COVID in general. I got to say, it's a nice up and up for people to get back to traveling a bit, doing what we can do as a whole as people, you know? So we're getting back to some sense of normalcy, right? Definitely. And that's that's definitely good to see. You know, people are starting to get out. Um, they're not being afraid to reach out to, um, you know, each other the way that humans are supposed to be. We're not supposed to be locked up. That's all I'm, I'll say on that. So it's nice that people are starting to get out, starting to go back to their home gyms, you know, start, starting to try to restart their their lifestyle again. And I think that's wonderful. I mean, with the locked up, man, it will be like Akon, locked up, they won't let us out. It's one of those things where, as human beings, we can find the creative juices and the overall positive mindset, you know, positively proactive, if you will. And that's great during the tough times, but now that we're back to doing what we can do, I think it's great for everybody to expand their horizons and just go back out and do what they were supposed to do and find their purpose, you know? Definitely. I definitely agree with that. Yes. And speaking of finding purpose, man, the purpose is you right here, Miss Muscle Milk Susan K, which I'm going to say right now as we get into LFC, we have never had a muscle milk in LFC. We have never, we've had a honey punch. We've had so many women of many different nicknames, but we've never had a muscle milk. So I got to say, LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships, it's amazing to see you apart as a prospect. It's going to be great to what we finally see in the ring. It's a beauty mesh mixed with like mass appeal and sex appeal, and it's fighting. So, I mean, it's a nice mix for everybody, right? Oh, I definitely agree. Um, I could not be even more excited to be joining in with them. And I'm hoping that this upcoming year, I'll even have more hands on with with them. Um, we definitely need to get more um, muscular women out there um, and showcase the other side of them. We have so many sides that make up who we are. Um, and I feel like I have the best of both worlds. You know, I can have the grunting side, the side that is serious, getting down to lifting those weights, 
getting a little bit dirty, making sure, you know, that I can flip it on over to looking just as sexy and sensual um, in, in a bikini or lingerie. Um, that's one thing that I also enjoy too is, is you know, I, I just have it all. I, I elite power lifter, bodybuilder, lingerie wrestler, and with the uh, adult industry, uh, what more could you ask for? Your variety, and that's what I love about you. I, like I said, the, the list is growing longer with your resume, Susan, and I think what's great about it, too, is I love what I love about LFC, and this also incorporates with everything in women in general, it's the overall sense of there's the strength, there's the power, but you have to have that sex appeal. And, I mean, WWE over the years, we're focusing now on women who are wrestlers, but we still got some beauty and cutie beauties on the roster. But it's like, let's not deny or hold back that sex appeal that really does appeal to a lot of men and appeals to a lot of women because it's very empowering, and we need a little bit of sex appeal in our lives, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. We, you, you always need variety. You know, and um, I think people are now coming around saying, hey, you know, what is this? Uh, what is this muscle milk? You know, what, what, who is she? And, and um, you know, wow, I didn't know a lot of men will say that. Wow, I didn't know muscles can be so sensual and, and they can. And, and that's what I'm trying to bring out, you know, the the other side of muscles. Look at it from a stance, too, as well. First and foremost, the name is very creative, and the name also is very fitting from she's got muscle, she's a MILF, let's put it together with the muscle MILF. It's one of those things as well where a lot of people get behind that, and it also really does. It's a gravitational pull, so to speak. People gravitate towards you, Susan. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, and again, it goes in with just variation. You know, you don't you don't ever want to limit yourself. You know, so you want to take your best aspects and put them forward. And I believe my 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 uh, name says it all. That's the thing. When it comes to being self-explanatory, you cannot go wrong. And what we also can't go wrong with men, muscle fetish has become such an amazing world in the fetish type of world. And with people like yourself, and it's amazing to see how many clientels, how much content be created with the muscle fetishes. It's great to just see lift and carries, head scissors, what have you, wrestling, that type of art form and style. It's great to see that really being for, for the forefront because there's so many different fetishes and preferences. There is. And, you know, there was a time where people kept those fetishes like hush hush and everyone was like, oh, I don't want anyone to know this or that. Or people would make fun of the others that have different fetishes. But, you know, a fetish is a fetish no matter what it is, if it's popular or not. You know, it is it is a desire. And why not bring out the best in that, whatever it may be? Agreed wholeheartedly, and I look at it from a stance too as well. I remember over here, like foot fetish is a big thing. Now with muscle fetish, there's something for everyone. We mentioned the world variety. Everybody's unique. Everybody has their preferences. And I think, you know, it's 2022 now. It's not back in like early 2000s, late 90s, what have you. It's like we can be more open and we can enjoy who we are. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a new year. It's a new dawning, so to speak, for the fetish world. Oh, I definitely agree. And and I hope it still keeps growing. You know, um, we're still we're still in that little area where, um, you know, people still going, oh, my God, you do what? That kind of thing. However, that's that even that's narrowing down, you know, people, I think, with only fans opening up and everyone thinking they were going to make a quick buck. They also realized how much uh, work it goes into it, how an individual woman who's doing something like that, the um, the the business side of it, it's definitely, you're not going to just post something and make a lot of money. It, it takes time and effort, just like any other small business, you have to build it up. I think what's amazing as well is, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of get that myself. It's like, wait, you do what? What's LFC Laundry Fighting Championship? But if you actually look at it and analyze, dissect and decipher it, we're all working people. We're all trying to accumulate money. We're all trying to do our jobs. So it's like your job may be different from my job, but at the end of the day, we're providing for our families and we're providing for ourselves. So it's like, where's the issue, right? Exactly, exactly. You can say it better. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have this idea that, you, you know, we're just kind of rolling out of bed and boom, we're just having a bunch of fun, you know, and but no, um, I am having a lot of fun. However, it, it is a lot of work and um, I'm getting to the point where now I'm going to have to bring some outsiders in to help me run it because it's just almost impossible to run everything on your own. A lot of people don't realize the time and effort that goes into produce content and everything in general. I mean, like you mentioned, like the adult world, a lot of people, like you said, it's just, oh, here's a scene, you're laying your back, boom, we're done, right? Or LFC, oh, they're rolling around in lingerie and they're 
No, it's the shooting that goes into it. It's the lighting. It's the overall how we get that shot, the beautiful imagery, so to speak. Like a lot of people don't realize, like just to put that content out for everybody, the hours, the time, the patience that really goes into it. Oh, definitely. It, it definitely is. And that's not even including making sure that you're staying on top of your personal life, you know, your family, your 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 other. Usually everyone has an additional job, you know, um, real quick shout out to Metroflex Jim Marietta. I am proudly the general manager of the gym. Um, and so that takes a lot of time away from having to devote it towards the filming industry part of it. Um, so no, you know, it, we are still trying to juggle a lot of a lot of other things um, as well as my training. You know, without my training, then I'm not muscle milk. <laughs> so that's got to be prioritized. Also, looking at it from a stance as well, being a general manager of an amazing gym, which will be tagged, the links will be in the description to the gym. But God dang, man, you're helping train people, you're training yourself. It's one of those things where you're very much like a people person in the vibrancy shows within your clientele. So you get to help people in the fetish world and in the training world. So, I mean, it's a nice balance for you, Susan. It really is. It really is. And, you know, um, originally before the pandemic, um, I was a, a, a physical therapist physical therapist assistant, um, helping the elderly. Geriatrics was my specialty. Um, so being able, I've done that so for, for over 10 years. So it was very refreshing to be able to step up into the um, athletic side and help people in that area. It's also very dangerous when it comes to the fighting side because you know people's pressure points and stuff like that. I got to say, when you get to LFC or you do some more wrestling, everybody's got to watch out, man. That's so pressure point, just the experience, and then you get to the other side of things. That is a combustible element right there for the muscle milk. Yeah, you know what? I, I do have a little uh, uh, little tools on the side that I can definitely use, so I'm looking forward for someone to step up and you know take that initiative. <laughs> And what I also love about it, too, as well, um, the last time we spoke in the interview will be in the description. My God, woman, you're training in wrestling. You're doing your thing. Sessions Wrestling, which also coincides with LFC. We see Jennifer Thomas, a.k.a. Jenny Bloody Valentine, LFC. A lot of the mixtures of the session world getting into LFC and so much of a variety, like we mentioned. Like, you're doing your thing on the wrestling side of things. How's that going? You're getting to train and perform your craft and your skills. I think that's awesome as well that you took up some wrestling. I did. I, I definitely did. Uh, so I wanted to learn uh, the, the basics. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was well-rounded in, in the sport itself because there are those who request semi, um, you know, uh, was it semi um, uh, competitive wrestling um, as well. So, you know, you kind of have to know the sport of it, uh, you know, it's not just running around and just tumbling over each other, you know, and I'm competitive. I, you know, I'm still going to want to get out. Some of those girls have a very, very impressive background. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is some of these girls have been doing it professional for half their life. And now they're switching it over to the uh, lingerie side of it. So I definitely want to make sure that my A game is up there. I look at it, what's very cool, like I mentioned before, it's badass women of all different art forms mixed with sex appeal. I mean, we saw a little something like that in the mid-2000s, if you will. We had the LFL, the Lingerie Football League. What's very cool about that is it's badass women and incorporates the game of football, but also applies to sex appeal. So I think if you equate those two and if you incorporate, like, women's mixed martial arts and pro wrestling, it's a win-win for everybody because they get to see skill and transition and transactions and transmorgraphy. And then you get the other side of things where it's just like, hey, I get to see a beautiful woman applying her craft and doing her thing. So, again, nice balance, but at the same time, everything kind of falls into fruition. Definitely. Yeah, it definitely does. And let me tell you, um, when I attended the uh, Loma Linda University, <laughs> I was on the women's uh, football team um, that they had. And, oh, my goodness, it's, it is rough, let me tell you. <laughs> it is rough experience, so. Oh, my God. Well, that's the thing, too, when people go into, like, anything that becomes, like, physical sport like football. I mean, we've seen a lot of football stars in professional wrestling. They'll tell you it's a whole different world once you get into pro wrestling. Same with bodybuilding. And I think what I love about that, too, is you could go from any stage of your life. You could go from modeling. You could go to MMA or what have you. Some people will be like, oh, it's modeling. What are you doing going to MMA? But what also incorporates the imagery side of things, you get to apply yourself from the physical side of things. Again, nice mix, nice blend. But it's also something new for somebody to try. And, hey, you may fall flat on your face but you can at least say you tried right oh definitely definitely and um you know i i the the 
the wrestling is definitely new for me. Um, I'm definitely doing my homework though. And uh, I just think I have a lot to offer again, you know, not only am I muscular, but um, I have a unique look to me. And um, I would say that's because of my nationality um, and, and just the background of what I've, I've had uh, just goes along really well with with the uh, lingerie and the in the adult industry as well as the uh, bodybuilding world. I gotta say, first and foremost, talk about your stature and your specimen because as I'm looking at you, which by the way, you look lovely as always, Susan. But God dang, man, you have that appeal to you. And what I also love about the appeal side of things, we're talking about lingerie. Besides the fact of getting in there, looking sexy, and applying your craft, the entrance, the spectacle, the overall pattern, if you will, of your entrance. I gotta ask you, and I love asking this from the fashion side of things, what kind of lingerie are we thinking about wearing there, Susan? You gotta make that impact to make that appeal. You know what? I already have that figured out. Um, it kind of goes with my character with Muscle Milf. Muscle Milf, she is all about herself. Uh, she is just all about winning no matter what she has to do. So definitely is gonna be the dark, nice dark side of town. G-string dark, uh, leather dark, anything black. I like your style. I like it already. And here's the thing. People say what they will about black, but black goes with everything. If you can have that, if it's, if it's something that pops or it really does showcase like a different beautiful imagery, also with a little mix of eggs, I think that's awesome, you know? Yes, definitely, definitely. And I, and uh, there's a couple of uh, pictures that I have and videos where I'm all in black with my leather black boots and everything. And, and uh, I, I definitely think that it fits my my who I am and my character as well very perfectly. And who you are is awesome and beautiful, my muscle milk friend. But I got to talk about also as well adult work. For those who have not seen Susan's adult work in her only pants, my goodness gracious, the content never stops. There's always that dominatrix type of vibe to it. There's also that sensual side. The adult side of things, again, you're hitting on all cylinders. I love what you put into it content and how it's everything that's unique and really just shows the overall sensual side of things. Yeah, thank you. I, I do put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I know uh, the last couple of months I've, I haven't been able to produce as much as I would like to. So um, me and, a, and another producer is are getting together so we can come up with some more content um, that I'm really excited about. I feel like I will need to make some adjustments to my uh, scheduling and what I'm doing so I can have time to produce uh, what what I really want to bring out. I still haven't really brought out um, the style that I'm looking for. And um, I've got a lot of good feedbacks from, from what I have, but I feel like I'm far from where I want to be. I got to say, when it comes to content just in general, with you yourself and how you're portrayed your character, and you're also very amped up with your character, and I love it because, again, it showcases you, Susan. It's kind of like it's an honor to go one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. It'll be an honor for LFC. It'll be an honor to work with the content creator, but God dang, man. It's also kind of terrifying because we were talking about the specimen that you are, but it showcases in your work. So you have that evoking of emotions, if you will, that goes into your overall craft. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And, and um, I can't wait for you guys to see the upcoming um, content. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And I mean, Jennifer Thomas, like we spoke about before with session, she's got women's athletes on fire, which how awesome is that as well? You get to see more as much of empowering women, bodybuilding just in general and have a lot of fun. Another take on women's wrestling in general. The women's athletes on fire has been killing it. Definitely. You know what? I really, really lucky that um, I'm able to work with Jennifer with Session Girls. Um, you know, she is so much about athlete and bringing out the best side, giving opportunities. And, you know, we, we need more people like that um, because I think for a long time, athletic women were overlooked and now this is their time coming out. That's how you have to look into it too, as well. And I think from the stance, like back in the 80s, we had Glow, Gorgeous Lady of Wrestling, which has transitioned to Netflix now with a whole different season, a whole different women applying their craft. But if you see something like that, where it's just like it's something different than what you see out the WWF at the time or different women's wrestling and how it's portrayed, and then you see women's athletes on fire has the same storyline, has the same grit and determination. It's like this version's day, every day version of Glow. And it's like, all right, you know, it's something that we haven't seen in a while, but boom, here we are. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just going to grow from here as well. 
Agreed. And what I also love about it, too, as well, if you can branch out more with what you're doing from sessions and just like the overall female empowerment into that, I think it's worth it. And what I also love about you as well, but your mindset, you're always delivering a lot of positive quotes and wanting to help people. I think that's very much needed on social media and just in general, because a lot of people need to get up, get ourselves out there and just really showcase our talents. Right. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I've had some really, really amazing women that that took the time to show me um, and and help me along as well. So I, I want to pass that down as well and, and be known as, you know, someone that is trying to encourage and and not discourage uh, other women wanting to do this as well. You know, always head, hold your head up high. Always be proud of what you produce. Always, uh, you know, uh, bring the best foot forward. Agreed 1000%. I think one of the things I've always kind of developed from like latest quotes is I always go with progression, succession, no regression, meaning continue to progress, continue to succeed, but do not regress and go back. Take one step forward, one step back, if that makes sense. Very good. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, definitely. That's how you have to look at it. And I also look at it from a stance too as well with people just in general. I love the fact that again, we get to explore different horizons and different varieties and different lines of work and crafts. And I think what anybody does, I think is absolutely wonderful. And as long as they stay on their path and they just continue to grind, they will see results. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And and then that kind of goes into the bodybuilding world, you know, seeing results. You know, um, sometimes what I'll do on my Instagram is I will show about organization, small little things within my house that I do because it all goes together. I believe that your your personal lifestyle needs to be organized. Um, it needs to be organized. So if that person is trying to produce uh, a new look or um, new goals in the fitness industry, whatever it may be. If you're not, if you're not organized, then you're going to be running around in, in circles and, and not get anywhere. Um, you know, so th th I love this lifestyle because it's always um, challenging. It's always uh, changing. And you do have to really uh, set aside um, and, and learn skills um, so that you are always improving yourself. It's really kind of like all about adaptation and how you adapt yourself, because if you don't adapt, then you'll perish. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you continue adapting and evolving, I think that's key to anything as well. So absolutely. one thousand percent. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So. I hear you. And I look at it from a stance as well. What I've always respected about the bodybuilding world, and I still remember going to 7-Eleven as a kid looking at the Flex magazines and their muscles and fitness, what have you. I've always respected, because we get to see a lot of your food, which by the way, Mamja, I feel like hungry every time I see your videos of your food and how you, what you encompass in your house. I look at it from a stance too as well. That's just a great meal plan and that's just great daily prep. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and again, if you if you're not organized, then how are you going to prep those meal plans? You know, um, how are you going to make sure that you have everything ready for that day? Believe me, it, it's so funny. My friend and I were just talking about this not too long ago. If you ever look at a bodybuilder when they leave for the day, it's not just grabbing a bag or two. <laughs> it's grabbing their their uh, their their pre workouts and their shakers and their food and their you know, second. Uh, attire so when they have to go train you know because most of the time i leave i leave my day starts like around uh uh 5 a.m is when i get up and then i'll be back home like 11 30 at night so it's a very very long day so i definitely have to make sure that i have everything with me so i can get my training in um you know i also work with um mb fitness uh, as one of their IFBB uh, personal trainers uh, for athletes, you know, so um, I got to be on, on, the, on my, the, my A game, you know, at all times. And it does certainly show with what you do. I, I love that mindset. I got to say, going forward, I got to wish you nothing but continued success, man, because what we're seeing right now with just Susan Kay and in 2022, there's going to be a lot of more goals to exceed, and I think you're going to obtain them, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. It definitely, it's definitely, I'm really excited about that. One of the biggest things, though, is I, I did change out with my um, my coach. And um, so I'm really excited. I'm, my coach is uh, IFBB Brandon Ray. And um, this is going to be my first year working with him. So he um, is just well known for his training and posing. So I can't wait. The elegance and the grace and the glamour that we're going to see you continue to pose and what you do 
forward with IFBB. I love it. And I will say this as well. I got to go back to OnlyFans for a second because how great is the OnlyFans community? Not just for bringing out the content, but the enormous people that you get from the fan side of things, the community it brings in. It's great to see such a fanfare, everything that we had going on through COVID and how people are doing the OnlyFans and really showcasing that as well. It's great to see how much that's grown over the last year or so, right? Oh, definitely is. Yes. And and um, I love it because, um, you know, I love hearing their feedback. Uh, a lot of my ideas come from them. Um, and so I still I, I want to encourage them. I want them to feel comfortable to send me emails, send me messages. Let me know what is it that they that turns them on? What is it that they want to see? You know, and you'd be surprised like um, it's not it's not just your typical, uh, you know, men's fantasies. It's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's very creative. And I think that's what really keeps me going. I got to say, it keeps a lot of us to tune into your product, to tune into your content creative, and just to continue into yourself, Miss Susan Kay. And I got to say, I cannot wait to see more of that. I can't wait to see just in general, the exciting and the aspiration and the smile on my face is not going away as to see the muscle milk do her thing in 2022. But before we close this out, I'm going to say right now, the overture's here. Anytime you want to come back on, the floor is yours. I'd be happy to help you. Oh, well, thank you. And I'm looking forward to coming back. I love talking to you. Uh, the feeling is mutual, my friend. So this is where I step back. Muscle Mill Susan K. Please promote Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, OnlyFans, wherever we can find you on all forms of social media. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Yeah, so um, I just want to shout out for my OnlyFans. It's OnlyFans.com, Muscle Mill Susan K. I also have the um, Instagram. Um, I have two Instagrams. One of them is the, uh, the Muscle Milf underscore Susan K IFBB and then the other one is muscle milk Susan K IFBB um, one of them is about the seriousness of uh, my my um, um, uh, training and my clients and then the other one is the uh, fun side of the muscle industry so check those out as well and then a big shout out to mbfitnessusa.com um, for those who want to do online training and want to specialize with me um, go over there and check that out as well definitely follow susan on her instagram fronts as well both of them they provide a lot of beautiful imagery and a lot of insight into the muscle milk that is susan k i gotta say check her out on twitter as well because you get to see what we see a lot of her great clips from OnlyFans. And oh, I got to say, there's a lot of great stuff to come, and I cannot wait to see it. And guys, before we do close this, as I always say, beauty straight the dominance of three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Miss Susan K, I look forward to seeing you in LFC, and I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you.